All right, we mentioned a lot of things going on in the macro, the port strike, uh, a big jobs report coming up before the bell today, even bigger one tomorrow. What is your word of the day? How do you see today shaping up? So my word of today is convergence, as in just as, as you said, we have a convergence of different events happening this week that are really creating this perfect storm um, that have the potential that are sparking volatility, but also have the potential to spark volatility in the markets in the short term as well. All right. So if it's a perfect storm of volatility that obviously could lead to some big market moves, um, how do you either protect for that or take advantage of a possible opportunity? What are you looking at? Yeah, I mean, so again, you mentioned these events. We've got the conflict, the, the war in the Middle East, um, also the election. Uh, we had the vice presidential debate this week. Um, and so we're, we're thinking about what types of reactions the market might have for, um, for uh, something like that, right? So, of course, with the, with the uh, conflict in the Middle East, we saw bond prices kind of um, – go uh, sell off right bonds sell off on monday but then bond prices kind of stabilize after after monday as investors were really kind of thinking about that flight to safety as the u.s election kind of gets closer we expect to see some more short-term volatility especially over the, the course of the next 35 days uh, we've got the pork strike all of those things and so what we're looking at right so again you know uh uh, Frank, whenever I'm on, I'm always wanting to talk about strategy, asset allocation. And, you know, what we're thinking about is if I'm an investor sitting at home watching CNBC. You probably have a portfolio that has a higher concentration to, to, to equities because we're always talking about these exciting names. Um, so now is a good time to really look at your portfolio. Think about what you can't possibly take off the table. Listen, the S&P is up almost, what, 20 percent for the year? Tech has done its job. Um, Consumer discretionary has done has has done its job, and now of course we're seeing leadership change. We talked about that. You talked about it a little bit a little bit earlier on the show. So thinking about what you can't, what money you can't take off the table and put it to work someplace else. All right, let's talk about your pick for us. It's actually a mutual fund. We don't get many mutual funds here on the show. The tickers, ARGFX. We're going to show the performance. Um, it's mostly small and mid cap names in there. So. Pretty solid performance, um, especially when you look at small caps. It's outperforming the small caps by quite a bit, actually outperforming the market since then as well. Um, why do you like this right now? Yeah, so listen, small caps and mid caps, when we think about what happened over the past quarter, are still really doing well, right? And so listen, I don't want to pick sectors right now. Uh, I want to play size and potentially style. It's an easier game with more opportunities to win for us. So I do like um, the Aerial Fund, ARGFX. These guys have been doing this since 1985, 1986. Um, I love their process. Uh, as you mentioned, it is a, a high allocation to, to small cap names, and here's why you want Want to go active in small cap, right? So it, in, in some other classes, it might be good to do an ETF, an index fund, but there's less coverage, there's less analyst coverage in small cap and mid cap stocks. And so the aerial team kind of takes advantage of that, um, that lack of information in the market. And that's why they've been able to overperform uh, their, their um, indices consistently okay. since the inception of the fund in 1986.